The Azitec and Victor pedals are great, but should you buy them over other high-end pedals on the market? That's what we're talking about today. Quick disclaimer before we get into this video, Azitec did send me these pedals, but they don't have any influence over what I say, and they directly told me that they don't want to see the video before I release it, so the opinions are completely my own. On top of this, they provided me with an affiliate link, which I would love if you were to use, as that's what will allow me to chase my dreams on this channel. Let's jump into it. The Azitec and Victor pedals came on the market back in late 2021, and have since then gathered a whole lot of attention through great marketing and great quality of the product but what makes them so great. The pedals come in a premium box and is neatly packed to ensure that no damage occurs through transport. On top of that, it includes a physical warranty as well as a manual so you can set up your pedals exactly how you want it. It also comes with four screws for mounting, but you might have to drill some holes in your pedal tray to get them to fit. The standard Invicta pedals come at a price of 750 euros, excluding VAT. This model has the throttle and the brake mounted to the same base plate and you can buy an additional clutch for another 250 euros. They've also recently released the Azitec Invicta S where the throttle and the brake is mounted on separate plates so you can get them 100 millimeters further away from each other if that's what you prefer. And they come at a price of 7.99, so only 50 euros more if you want to mount your pedals a bit further away from each other. The brake system is called THORB, which is an acronym for Twin Hydraulic Opposing Rapid Pistons which is a very long abbreviation. The pedals are made of die cast aluminum, which gives them a very good and long durability. They have three interchangeable elastomers, as well as a physical stop and an expansion chamber to mimic the perfect race car feel. And yes, I stole that sentence straight from the website. What a content creator I am. The pressure sensor ranges from zero to 100 bar, which equivalates to 180 kilograms of braking force. And the general feeling of the brakes is very good and very customizable. It's your own choice whether you want a hard pedal with basically no travel or a more lenient pedal with more travel. I personally use the middle one as I feel like it's a good combination of both and you can still feel the travel of the brake physically moving. A little fun fact about these pedals, as you take have gone through and tested them in their factory and they worked absolutely fine for over a million activations. Throttle is made of die cast aluminum tool and has a 16-bit magnetic wireless all throttle position sensor. Whatever that means. On top of this, you can adjust the hardness of the pedal as well as the travel and stop, which I will show you how to do now. But before we do that, I want to say that if you are enjoying the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you always have my latest video in your sub box. Now, let's get to adjusting these pedals. Once you've mounted these lovely pedals to your rig, it's time to adjust them to your liking. And this is where these pedals start to show why they are so popular. To adjust the throttle pedal, you want to take this thing off and screw the screw loose at the front. Then you can adjust it however you want it to. And don't forget to screw it back in again, because if not, it will be loose. To adjust the angle of the brake pedal, however, you want to go to the back of the pedal, screw this thing loose down here, take off the whole, uh, what do you call that, pedal stem? Uh, and then unscrew the screw at the front and then you can adjust your brake pedal however you want to. To change the preload of the throttle pedal, you want to unscrew the screw at the front first to make it go loose. And then you can adjust it on the second one. You know, if you, if you put it further down, it will go tighter and the throttle will feel harder. And if you go further up, it will feel lighter. If you want to change the stiffness of the brake, you have to unscrew the thing at the bottom completely, screw this thing out and then change it with one of the other elastomers that are in the box. And that's how you basically adjust everything hardware-wise on your aesthetic pedals. When you've plugged in your pedals, you can go to the race hub and calibrate your pedals to exactly how hard you want them. As well as adjust the color of the LEDs, which by the way, look amazing. Even though these pedals are so great quality, small stuff like the LEDs is still things that gets me really happy to look at. Anyways, the overall feel and customizability of these pedals are on a really high level. Isotech has really made a great product here. The LEDs on the pedals look outstanding on a sim rig, and I'm gonna be using these pedals for my future races. The only thing I can point out is that the pedal face is a bit rough. So I would recommend getting yourself a pair of boots or just some very thick socks so that the bottom of your feet won't die. So to conclude it all off, would I recommend the Azitec Invicta pedals for a sim racing pro or your average sim racer? Absolutely, they come at a pretty competitive price and there's really not anything wrong with them. To me, the outstanding feature here is definitely the hydraulic brake. It feels really good and I would recommend anyone who wants something that feels like a real race car, a set of the Acetec Invicta pedals. I've been Marcus and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.